me. Um, if you're here, type to me. Oh, now it says live. So before it was buffering and I was going live, but now I'm live. Hi, hello, I'm Stephanie and I'm so glad that you are here. Today we're going to be talking about crock potting and meal planning and slow living, which are all things that I'm super passionate about and I live or I try to live every day. All right, we got a real live person. We've got David and Judy. This is so exciting, you guys. So I'm home. Hi, Dave, Dave from Louisville or Die. Okay, very, very, very cool. Okay, wow. Okay, I should relax then because there's actually real people and then I'm not talking to myself. So due to the coronavirus, this is how we're doing this presentation. And I have three children at home who are all tucked away in their own corners of the house in front of their own screens. And we have a, a new puppy named Sheldon the Basset Hound who is supposed to be out on a walk. So hopefully uh, this all works well. So, okay. So we are here to talk slow cooking and slow living and meal planning. And I'm scheduled for an hour and I, oh, it's, it's Aunt Jeannie. My Aunt Jeannie is my godmother and she's from Hawaii and she's here and that's so exciting. Oh, and there's Jen. Jen, thank you for doing this. I'm happy to do this. <laughs> I think it's really awesome and you did a fantastic job. Okay, all right, let's get going. So I have seven things that I'm gonna talk about in this one hour. So first I'm going to tell you who I am and I'm gonna share a little bit of our family's gluten-free journey. And then I'm going to talk about why I like my crock pot so much. And then we're going to talk about meal planning. And we're going to kind of go over easy ways for a busy family to meal plan. Not every one of my readers is a busy family, but that's sort of my niche and, and where people find me is that they've got a super busy household, but they still need to feed the people. And so that's what we'll do. And then um, we'll go over ins and outs of the best kind of crock pot. I've got a bunch lined up here and I'll show them up to the camera and then we'll move into questions. So I love that you guys. Oh, so this is such a good platform because I can see all of the questions streaming. So I'm just going to talk and then every once in a while I will pause and I'll go through. But then I am happy to stay on as long as you'd like and do one on one questions. Um, I took the day off work and I am here for you. So I'm excited. And I didn't have to get on an airplane. And the last time I spoke uh, at one of Jen's conferences, I did have to go on an airplane. So yay, I'm happy to be here in my kitchen. Okay, so I am Stephanie O'Day and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I am a mom of three. And that is primarily who I am, is I'm, I'm just a mom who really likes crock pots. And um, I started in 2008 an online site called A Year of Slow Cooking. And it was a New Year's resolution. I wanted to learn how to blog. I wanted to figure out how to legitimately make money from home while staying home with my kids. And so I thought, all right, I was doing some freelance work for blogher.com, which is a women's online blogging company and there were real people and they were actually making money. And I thought, gosh, is this something that I could figure out how to do? Could I write a website? Could me who is only as techy as a crock pot figure out how to build a website? And so I decided if it was a new year's resolution, I would have a start date and an end date and I would force myself to do it. I liked the idea of a cooking website recipes because you're giving Google what people are searching for. And I happen to be searching for crock pot chicken recipes often. And so it sort of came together and that's how a year of slow cooking was born. I knew I didn't want to share personal information about my kids online. I'm actually a pretty private person. And um, still to this day, there's no pictures of the kids anywhere online. Um, I promised my husband I wouldn't talk about where we exactly live, our town, so we're just in the San Francisco area. And from that New Year's resolution, I ended up on the Rachel Ray Show, which was um, super exciting. And um, it happened in 
February of that very first year, and I figured out how to make creme brulee in the crock pot, in the slow cooker. And I was super excited. And I was home with babies on the couch and the Rachel Ray show was playing in the background. At the very end, after the credits, there was this blurb and it said, do you have something to share with Rachel? Email us and maybe you'll appear on the show. So I got a little cocky and I wrote in all caps. I broke every single email etiquette rule that exists. I wrote in all caps. I said, I am the best. I am awesome. I learned how to make creme brulee in the crock pot and you should have me on your show. And then I pressed send. And then I never thought about it ever, ever, ever again. And so I let it go. And then a few weeks later, the phone rang. It was a rainy day and my three-year-old was super crazy fussy. So I pick up the phone with like the cranky, like telemarketer voice. I'm like, hello. And uh, this lady on the phone, her name happened to be Stephanie also. And she says, hi there. Do you have time to talk? It's Stephanie from the Rachel Ray show. And I'm like, oh, I do have time to talk. So then she could hear through the phone, my fussy three-year-old. And she's like, oh, it's not a good time for you. I'll call back. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to do this. So this was my parenting trick. You will not hear this anywhere else. This is not written in Parents Magazine. I picked up my three-year-old under the arm and I went to the fridge and I opened it and I found a half-eaten container of Pillsbury frosting. And so I plopped her in a dry bathtub with a spoon and I walked away. And she happily ate the frosting while I talked to the producer on the Rachel Ray Show. And that is how I ended up on the Rachel Ray Show. So, and then from there, I have had lots of super, very cool things. I've been on TV a few more times. And um, and since then, I now have um, 10 books that I've written. And I am still super passionate about all things slow cooking. And I also am starting to be um, really kind of an advisor to moms on how to slow down. I, I like the idea of using the crock pot as a metaphor for life. <sighs> Let's take a breath. And let's slow ourselves down and, and try not to rush and, and try and really enjoy and capture this time that you have and, and soak up as much of the time you have with your kids in the house before they leave. So back to who I am and how we turn gluten free. So I have three children. I now have one in college, one in high school, and I have um, one still in elementary school. She's fifth grade. They are, they are all girls. So, uh, Pray for my husband. Um, we recently bought a, uh, well, we bought, we we adopted a, a Basset Hound puppy, Sheldon. So Sheldon uh, is the lone testosterone with Adam in the house. And uh, and so anyway, so we do have a little baby boy, but he happens to be a puppy. Um, so gluten-free in this and how I met Jen. My recipes online and in all of my cookbooks happen to be gluten-free. I don't advertise as a gluten-free author. I do write for um, Simply Gluten-Free Magazine and I and I love it. And if you need a gluten-free magazine, I would highly recommend it. But I don't consider myself all things gluten-free except for we have been living this since 2006. And that was because at the time, my daughter, um, my middle daughter, who's in high school, she was 22 months. And she began vomiting um, sporadically. She, we, we couldn't figure it out. Um, I was teaching preschool, and I was lucky that the kids could come to um, to work with me. And I thought I was living this dream life. I was working. My babies could come to work with me. Everything was great. But she just kept getting sick, and I could not figure it out. So I quit. And um, again, we live in San Francisco, so my husband Adam's like, yeah, no, that's not actually a really good thing for you. Um, but I did it. I quit. And um, after some testing, we found out that she had celiac, which is gluten intolerance. And now in 2020, it's so prevalent. Everyone has a connection to celiac disease or gluten intolerance. But at the time, I didn't. I, there, there, believe it or not, were very few websites online and it was a challenge for me. And um, so when I started the Crockpot site in 2008, 
I wasn't planning to write at all about the gluten-free stuff. I was just going to make a crock pot recipe every day for a year and write about it. But I had to make them gluten-free because I had to still feed my family. So people and readers started paying attention that, oh, whoa, you use a gluten-free soy sauce. Oh, whoa, you use that kind of bread. You use that kind of baking mix. I do too. So I began to update my recipes and I would put my gluten-free notes off in, in the margins, in parentheses, and I found this, this sub niche of the crock potters of people who need gluten-free recipes and the fact that I can help with that. You don't have to do any math or, or, or mental gymnastics in your head. They're already translated for the crock pot and are already gluten-free. Okay. Um, underneath this, I think there is a, um, a quick down and dirty PDF that I had written up about our gluten-free journey. Um, called Going Gluten-Free Without Going Crazy, and you can um, download that. And um, there's also some coloring pages for kids with crockpots and really super quick and easy um, crockpot recipes for kids that you can um, print out. And I say for kids, but they're also for grown-ups. I, um, I have plenty of people who are intimidated by cooking, but they feel comfortable using the crockpot, and so um, easy is better when it comes to those kind of things. So one of the reasons I super love the slow cooker and especially how it turns into tied into gluten freeness is back in 2006 when I realized I had to learn how to cook. I had to cook now from scratch for my family. There was no more driving through and getting Panda Express orange chicken. I needed to figure out how to make these things at home, I needed safe food. Um, and so I turned to the only way I knew how to cook at the time, which was the crock pot. And the fact is, whatever you dump into it is what's there at the end of the day. So if you're using whole natural ingredients that are completely free of gluten, that's what you're gonna get at the end of a busy workday. So it really made sense to me, and it was such an easy way to get dinner going. Also, the crock pot forces you to meal plan. And I am a meal planner. I, I really am. I um, When my husband and I were first married, we were awfully young. We were 21, I think we got engaged. And actually I have, um, I'm walking away from my camera, but this is the first crock pot that I got. I, um, I wanted it when I became engaged. I told my mom that I needed to become more domestic. So I wanted a crock pot and a food dehydrator and a pasta machine. And this is the only one that has made it. And I love it. And I still use it. It's got a tiny bit of scotch tape on the lid. But that's okay. I have unconditional love for it. And I use it nonetheless. But as newlyweds, we were on a budget. And it was so eye-opening when I realized that the two of us could eat literally beans and rice and our servings were about eight to 12 cents. And it was just eye-opening. It was such an easy and economical way. And then that sort of kept going while we had children. It, it was, it kept us out of the grocery store at five o'clock at night with cranky and hungry kids. It kept me from ordering pizza. And it also allowed me to get dinner on in the morning. I'm still highly caffeinated and coherent. It's safe to use a knife because the kids are okay. And I, and I found at 4, 5, 6 p.m., my kids were cranky. It, it wasn't safe to be standing over a hot stovetop or goofing around with the oven with a toddler strapped to my ankle or somebody in the baby Bjorn. It just wasn't safe. So it was a very easy way to get dinner going when everyone was still young and um, we were on a super limited budget. I'm gonna scroll through some of these questions just to make sure. Okay, so Dawn has a celiac daughter and she's had this, you know, the, vom the vomiting thing was interesting because I didn't know anything about gluten and here's my baby vomiting. So of course my first idea is, oh, let's give her saltine crackers, or oh, let's limit her only to plain Cheerios and things like that. That oh, poor little baby, I was just literally poisoning her system. 
and I had no idea. Now she's fine. She's healthy. She is on the golf team. Um, she was a, um, a state champion gymnast. Um, she's probably the healthiest out of all of them. Um, but anyway, I just, I don't want you to worry about her. So she's, she's all good. Okay. So, um, the easiest way to meal plan when you're first starting out is, is literally to just get a note card and, and write down, fold it, make lines, whatever it is you need to do and jot down five meals that you know your family eats Monday, Monday through Friday, write down the meals. If you know on Saturday you always eat out, Sunday you go to your in-laws for dinner, don't worry about the weekend. But figure out the busy work week, buy all your ingredients for those recipes, and then you're done. Your entire week is over. And that is honestly the easiest way. In our house, we have two weeks we rotate through. We have week A, week B. These are the things that I know no matter what the kids are going to eat, we will end up with leftovers. Everyone's happy. There's no thinking. It's Wednesday. Oh, okay, we're going to either have spaghetti or we're going to have chicken and fried rice. Th those are the choices. Sometimes, yes, and especially during that crock potting year, I'm trying new things. I'm playing around with new recipes, but it's down and dirty. It's easy. We've got the grocery lists that correspond. I can send my oldest now who learned how to drive which is really scary, <laughs> but she's fine. I can send her to the grocery store with the list. I can send my husband to the list. I can text him the list. Super down and dirty easy. If you've never meal planned before and you want done for you meal plans, I do sell them on my site. I think they're down below. I think that it's $3 and 25 cents. You get a PDF that you can have forever and ever. And you, the, the grocery list is printed up for you. You can just follow it. It's even broken up um, by the aisles of the grocery store because um, that's how my brain works when I make grocery lists. <laughs> uh, okay, I see Martha. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, okay. So there's definitely people in the live stream who suffer from gluten. And I hope you feel better on, um, on your new diet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Carrie did this. Carrie's mom did the same thing. Saltines and white bread for an upset stomach. I know. It, looking back on it, it's it's um it's a little embarrassing that Steph in 2006 had very little wisdom. Because <laughs> Steph in 2020, that's the first thing I would recommend to someone is, well, uh, let's go to the basics and just eat plain white rice for a little while and then slowly add things back in. Okay. Another super easy way to meal plan, and I do have um, a lot of people who are on my email list and um, they write and they are new retirees or they're empty nesters and they're only cooking for two people. And because my recipes are usually for four to six people for families, they simply make it and then cut it in half and freeze the rest. And then later on in the month, they pull out a bag from the freezer and they've got dinner. And it's such an easy and simple way to stock your freezer. You've always got dinner. Um, but sometimes it takes somebody like me to suggest that to you. So I'm happy to suggest it. And, um, and I hope it's helpful. All right. So I saw one question about the Instant Pot. And so I want to talk about the Instant Pot. Let me grab it. Okay. I do have an Instant Pot. There it is. It's super fancy and shiny. So the Instant Pot is the cool new kid on the block. And it, um, I think I read somewhere that like in 2016 or 2017 on Black Friday, Amazon.com sold 70,000 Instant Pots that day alone. So there are a lot out there. People love them. I, and I'm embarrassed to say this out loud, I am not a huge fan of the Instant Pot, and I tried. I really, really tried. So if you are a fan of the Instant Pot, you should continue to be a fan of the Instant Pot. For me and for the way my life is right now and for the way my brain works, I like to slow down. I like to put the food on in the morning. 
I want to be prepared so when I come home at the end of the workday, dinner's already done. The Instant Pot, you can cook a whole chicken in like 30 minutes. You can bring a, a frozen pot roast back to life in an hour. That's fine. If that works for you and for your life right now that you can be in the kitchen at five, six o'clock at night and prepare the food and, and use it, go for it. Do it. But But for me right now, it's just the right thing to do is to get it over with in the morning, push the button, and then I do not have to go back into the kitchen for the rest of the day. And I hope that helps. Um, oh, Cindy says that she likes both. I do like both. I will tell you that the Instant Pot, due to the fact, I'm gonna ah, put it down and show you. So due to the fact that the cooking is in this, I, I call it kind of like a coffee can pot, um, your, your food then is layered in more on top of each other, if that's a technical term, than it would be in a slow cooker that's typically oval and it's spread out a little. So if that worries you um, and you're primarily going to use it for a slow cooker because it has a slow cooking setting, then I would suggest buying a traditional slow cooker. But if you want to goof around with the pressure cooking settings, having the steam trapped in that sort of coffee can shape is how pressure cookers work. So, so you have to have that shape if you're going to have the pressure cooker option. But if you're in the market for a regular slow cooker, I will share with you um, the ones that I personally use and like. I have um, 14 in the house. and um, Sometimes people ask if I name them. I don't. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm not into naming inanimate objects. I know some people really are. Like my grandparents named their cars. Um, I've never, I've never named an inanimate object. Probably I'm not very good with names, and so I forget them. But anyway, the um, the the go to that I use the most is called the Ninja Cooking System. This is an older model. If you go on Amazon right now, it's not gonna look like this. I think it'll be silver, um, but if you search for Ninja Cooking System, it'll run probably, I think, around 149. Um, I was filmed, uh, let's see, so the baby is 10. I think I was filmed in 2012, 2014, I don't know, one of those years. Um, for the infomercial for the Ninja Cooking System, and I fell in love with it. So, um, also I got to wear fake eyelashes for the first time. It was like a for reals movie set with a guy holding the, the microphone thing, and then another guy, and he was like on a forklift, but he had the camera and it zoomed down. It was a very, very cool experience. But anyway, so I do like the Ninja Cooking System. I was introduced to it because they featured me on their infomercial. Even if I wasn't featured on their infomercial, I would still really like it. And that's because it has the, the slow cooker setting. It is a programmable slow cooker. So you can set it um, in 30 minute increments. So if you're out of the house all day long, it's fantastic because if your recipe says, cook your chicken for six to eight hours, but you're out of the house for 10 to 12 hours, it's okay. It'll flip over to a warm setting and keep your food at this kind of like buffet, hot and safe temperature until you get back home. So I, I really do like programmable slow cookers. And if money is not an option, I would go for the Ninja cooking system. Um, due to the fact that it's, it's a lightweight metal pan um it's nice and then also it has a stove top and an oven setting very similar to how the instant pot does um, but it has a stove top and an oven setting so you can caramelize your onions and your garlic and brown your meat on all sides if you'd like to before flipping it to the slow cook setting and walking away and letting it cook all day uh oh Judy asks, how do I get on your mailing list? I would love for you to be on my mailing list. And I believe right under this, wherever you can see my face, I think there's a sign up for, um, for an email. So I would love for you 
to join um, the email list. I send out pretty much a, an email a day for my um, slow cookers, and I try my hardest to include the whole recipe so you don't have to do a whole bunch of clicking. I have people on my list who have been on my list for for 10 years, and we chat back and forth, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, Troy says, I wish he, I got asked to be on a commercial. It was neat. It was so neat, Troy. I, um, it was one of those out of body experiences where I was pretty sure they made a mistake and I shouldn't be doing this because I am just a mom and I just like crock pots. And now all of a sudden I have to be authoritative and it, it so it, it definitely felt out of body, but it was super, very exciting. Um, they don't run it anymore. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Um, and I had on a bright orange shirt because the the box was branded orange and I needed to, to match the branding. So anyway, okay. Um, I totally lost what I was talking about because I got excited to talk to, to Troy about being in the, um, oh, BJ. Okay, my do you cook chicken in a slow cooker and that ends up tasteless and rubbery? That's a great question. So yes, you can. Um, so I have an awful lot of chicken recipes on the site and in the cookbooks. Um, and one of my um, well-known posts is called Frequently Asked Questions About Chicken um, because Americans in general eat an awful lot of chicken. And uh, the best way for it not to come out rubbery is to just let it relax in the slow cooker all day, shred it, let it then reabsorb the cooking liquid and, and serve over rice. If you're cooking chicken thighs or something with a little bit more moisture, you don't need to shred them. The moisture will retain. But if you are cooking chicken breast, in general, chicken breast, because you're not quickly searing it on all sides and cooking it for a short amount of time, the way you would on an outside grill or broiled, um, will get that sort of mealy and dried out texture unless you shred it and let the um, cooking liquid get reabsorbed. So one nice thing about the way crockpots work is you're slow cooking, it's in there. All the moisture that you put in the pot comes back up and condensation builds and then rains. And this is my, uh, my weatherman approach to slow cooking back into the pot. And so you shouldn't have dried out meat. If you do have dried out meat, um, there's some things that we can talk about. So first off, you want to make sure that your pot is two thirds to three quarters of the way full. That is how crock pot recipes are um, are written. They're they're designed assuming you're going to use two thirds to three quarters of the space. If you find that you're not doing that, you can do a few things. You can add more food in. And um, or you can use a smaller pot. So I do have a few smaller pots to show you. That first one I showed you, my, my newlywed pot is about a five quart. This is the size that fits into a four quart. And that's a really good size for um, two, to, two to four people. You can get, you can get four four to six chicken breast halves stacked in there, and it works really well. This is a um, this is a very retro, I got this at a garage sale, um, uh, two and a half quart. Um, one of the issues with this one and kind of the older ones that you find is the insert can't get removed, and so it's not the easiest to clean. I do like removable inserts. This is a very simple down and dirty one quart. It is, I got this for $4.99 at Walmart on a Black Friday. And um, actually all of the words are starting to, to come off, but it still has the removable insert. And so if you live alone, this fits a really nice size chicken breast half and a jar of pasta sauce. And then that is truly the easiest way to cook. And I call that lazy cooking. Um, on my site, I think it's under lazy chicken, but you can use any cut of meat. So anything in the pot with your favorite sauce, a barbecue sauce, um, 
any of those simmer sauces that they have in the aisles at your grocery store will work great. And then this is super, super teeny tiny. There's no on and off switch. You just plug it in and it's on. So I have readers who say that they use this at their desk at lunch and they heat up a can of soup or they heat up last night's leftovers in it. Um, you just need to be aware that if it's plugged in, it's on. So when you walk away and you're done with it, you really do need to unplug it. If you're in the market for a brand new slow cooker, even though I wasn't in the infomercial, this is the brand and this is the kind that I recommend right now. And I just looked online and um, going into the fall, it's about $49. So this is the Hamilton Beach. It's a six quart. It's um, sometimes it's called the cook and carry and sometimes it's called the set and forget. It's essentially the same thing. What you're going to look for is clamps with a locking lid. And then the lid has a rubber gasket all the way around it. So your food will not dry out. And then the fact that it has this locking lid is great for a few things. What I use it for is for traveling. If I'm bringing potluck dish to um, friend's house, church, mom's house, it keeps your food in there. It's not gonna slosh all over the back of your minivan because that has happened and that is not fun. And then also one of our favorite librarians, she shared that she's got a cat who climbs up on the counter when she's at work and knocks the lid off of the crock pot and eats the food. So. Jenny the librarian promises that this is cat proof and your cat's not gonna eat your food. So I like that idea too. This is a standard six quart and a six quart is great if you're cooking um, for a large family or if you're going to entertain. I've seen some questions about how, what if you're gonna get, what if you want a smaller crock pot? If you're only in the market and you don't have a large family, and you don't think you're going to entertain, but I only want to buy one, what would you recommend? If you're only going to buy one, I would still recommend a six quart because what you can do is you can make it into a two quart super easily. So this is your standard one and a half quart corningware. And I'm going to show you, it's hard to tell with the webcam. But all it is, is it's nestled inside your crock pot to make a smaller cooking vessel. You do not need to add water around the base. All you're doing is creating a smaller <laughs> pot, essentially, for your food to be in. And then you can push the button and you can walk away and you can leave it all day. These are designed to go in a 400 degree oven and your dishwasher, same with the lid. If you have one of these without the lid, it's okay. You don't need the lid. It's just another level or layer of insulation for your food. So I use that often. Um, and even though I have three children in the house and the advice I would give to any other parent is you cook one dinner and one dinner only. I'm a bit of a pushover, and if I know I'm making a beef stew and one of my kids doesn't like food to touch or has decided to be vegetarian or vegan because they went off to college and they came back vegan, yet they still eat pepperoni, so that doesn't make sense. But anyway, I'm a pushover, and so I will at times make like a vegetarian something or other. And it's just, again, super easy. I'm making the same recipe. I omit the meat, but I'm only making it for one person. And so I'll throw it in here. And then again, I can go off to work. I, I can be gone all day. And so that's what I would recommend for you. Okay, Barbara, tell us again to make a model. You bet. So it is, it looks like this and it's Hamilton Beach. And I think the, the actual model is called the cook and carry. So, so what you're looking for are, are locking lids and a lid that, oh, never mind. 
It says right on here, stay and go. Hamilton, I'm sorry, I gave you wrong information. Hamilton Beach, stay and go. But essentially what is nice about it is you've got the locking lids. You can take it with you to your church potlucks, to picnics, things like that. And it's just absolutely wonderful. Can you put cookware in your crock pot? Yes. So Judy, anything that can go in an oven or the dishwasher is high heat and your crock pot isn't going to get as hot as it would in an oven and it's perfectly safe. You, you don't need to worry about that. Um, Cindy, would you recommend the Hamblewood Beach over the Ninja if you had the money for either? Ooh, this is such a good question. I think I would say both. If money and storage wasn't an option, I would say both because I usually go for the Ninja um, just because it's it's so quick and easy. And sometimes the locking lid annoys me when I'm just trying to get a frozen pot roast in and, and walk away. But if I knew I was going to be out of the house or carrying it around or going to any sort of of events where I'm going to a potluck, I would absolutely want the cook and carry. Um, and also the Hamilton Beach is a much more economical option for many people. It, it's usually under $50 and the, the programming is fantastic. It doesn't have the stove top setting. It doesn't have an oven setting. It certainly doesn't have a pressure cooker setting. It's really just a really nice, durable slow cooker. But I have, Three, I think, of that model. I know my mom has one. Um, many of my friends have bought them. And I've been um, using Crock-Pots extensively and, and through the site since 2008. And I've used some really expensive models that I don't tell anybody about because I didn't like them. But I do like that Hamilton Beach. <laughs> William. Okay. So he says that he has the Hamilton Beach and he loves it. But you may have to plug the hole in the lid if you have gravy or sauce. Yes. So this is something else that um, they don't tell you about. But I do talk about it, William. And I use um, painter's tape to plug my hole. So I actually peeled it off for this presentation because it doesn't look so pretty. And it was a little coated with, um, I think it was chili. But anyway, so this is a rubber gasket. And it comes with a probe that you can insert in and put it in the center of a roast. And then your meat will turn off when it hits a certain temperature. That is not who I am. That seems like a lot of work. And I just want to push the button and walk away. So I threw away the insert probe. But it still has this rubber gasket and this hole. So here, there's the rubber gasket and the hole. Some people have lost the rubber gasket, so their hole's even bigger. Just put a piece of painter's tape over it. And what he's saying is, what William was saying, is that um, if you are making a gravy or sauce where you want all of the liquid to stay in the pot, how I talked before that the liquid evaporates up and it gets stuck to the lid and then rains back down, that is the, the environment, the ecosystem for a crock pot. Oops, sorry. That was the lid of the ninja. Um, my kids are doing schooling, so oops, sorry, kids. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if it. All right, well, it didn't dent, so that's good. Um, this is live. This is fun. <laughs> um, I want all of the moisture to stay in the pot, and so if you find that your meat is a little dried out or evaporated and your pot does have that sort of hole, put a piece of painter's tape over it and, and don't think twice. It's, it's fine. You, you are in charge of um, what happens in your kitchen and uh, you don't have to do what the manufacturers want as far as I'm concerned. Martha, how long do crock pot meals take to cook? So the standard cooking time um, on low is about eight hours and on high is about four hours. And that is if your pot is at capacity, which is two thirds to three quarters of the way full. Um, 
your pot will reach its high temperature no matter what. So it will just take longer. So at the end, your simmer point on low will occur just a few hours later than your simmer point on high. High, high buys you, uh, uh, it, it, you can cook food faster. Um, so, so in general, the rule of thumb, little, little, the rule of thumb is four hours on high and eight hours on low. Um, but slow cookers, they do have a range for cooking. Almost every recipe I've ever written and, um, and other cookbook authors write is a range. And you sort of have to get to know your slow cooker. So um, it sounds silly, but play with it. Play with it on a weekend day when you're home and you're ready to monitor it and, and follow a recipe and the recipe suggested cooking time and check on it at the six hour mark and see if it's done. If it's not done, check on it again at the eight hour mark. And then you'll start to figure out the nuances of your own particular pot. I have readers write to me and they say that their pot cooks hot or they're at a different altitude and so their beans take forever. So you will have to sort of goof around and, and figure it out on a weekend day. My, my best suggestion is to follow a recipe first and then start to experiment. So um, I hope that I hope that helps. In the um, in the PDF below where I had written taco soup along with um, some kids coloring pages, there's a few other recipes in there that my kids like. So there's brown sugar chicken and there's also a vegan sweet potato chili. But taco soup is written out. And when I do cooking presentations for children, that is the recipe that we use. And if you are brand spanking new to slow cooking, that is the one that I recommend. It makes everybody happy. It makes a ton of food. It, uh, you can absolutely freeze it and thaw it. You can, um, we call it taco soup, but it's sort of a bit like a chili consistency. We, um, we make it into nachos. We spoon it over rice, um, over baked potatoes. Um, I've had firefighters write to me that they make it on a weekly basis and feed all the guys in the house. So it's a, it's a very well reviewed and, and liked and loved recipe online. And it happens to be completely gluten free. The, um, the secret ingredients are um, a pack, a packet of uh, McCormick taco seasoning and, um, and ranch dressing. And so um, I write in which kind I use to keep us gluten free. But then within that packet, there's also a recipe um, that you can make your own packets. If, if you're omitting dairy, for instance, many people who are gluten free are also dairy free. There's a recipe on, on how you can, you can do all that. Uh, Brittany, Brittany says that she loves my five ingredients cookbook and I'm glad, let's see, where's that one? That is, that's, that's this one. And, um, I like this one too, and I really like it because as I said, I've got a high schooler and a college age student in the house right now. And so the, the recipes really are ah, super, super, where's the camera? Super simple, and they only have five ingredients. And so if you're a brand new cook, if you're intimidated in the kitchen, that, that is absolutely where I would recommend starting with. Um, Nancy, asks if there's any foods I don't recommend to be cooked in a crock pot. Yes, so what is fun about what I did as a New Year's resolution was I forced myself to try something new every day for a year and they didn't all go well. So I, I have um, a subcategory on a year of slow cooking website called flops and these were all the things that I failed miserably at. So. One is hard boiled eggs. So the Instant Pot, if you do happen to have an Instant Pot, has a hard boiled egg setting. A slow cooker does not. I had the brilliant idea to put a dozen eggs in the slow cooker with like a half cup of water, put the lid on and slow cook for 10 hours while I slept. And I thought we would wake up in the morning to hard boiled eggs. No, I think we were woken up in the middle of the night to the worst smell in the history of the world. It was so gross. The eggs turned this grayish green color and the kitchen stunk to high heaven. So I do not recommend that. Um, 
I also tried to get fancy and um, I, I bought scallops and bacon and I thought if I cracked the lid, I could somehow create an oven situation and we could make bacon wrapped scallops. And that did not work at all. The, the bacon uh, was limp and soggy and nasty and the scallops, it, it, nobody ate them, nobody ate them. So I, uh, I double bagged that and put it out on the curb. And then I think that night, cause I was a little bummed, we got to go out for dinner. But um, yeah, so th there's definitely some things you shouldn't make, but I also would, I don't want to use the word convince. So what is the word? I persuade, I, I would want to, or suggest, I would like you to have fun in the kitchen and not worry too much about rules and this way and, and that way. Sometimes when I watch Chopped or other things on um, food TV or the, or the cooking network, I get intimidated. I do not have good knife skills. I um, regularly wander away from things on the stove and, and have them kind of bubble up, which is why I like this slow cooker because there's a lot of wiggle room um, for mistakes and for goofing and for testing your seasonings. If you're close to the end of cooking time and you know you no longer have raw meat and you taste it and it needs more salt, add the salt. It's it's fine. Even if the recipe didn't ask you to, you're in charge. It's your kitchen. It's your food. It's your family. And so I would suggest that you have confidence in yourself to, to play around and, and goof around. Um, cause I don't know. Otherwise, if it's too many rules, it becomes intimidating and then you don't want to do it. And then you just end up ordering takeout, which uh, nobody needs. Nobody needs. Okay. All right. So I can see from my live stream that I've got about 15 minutes. So I want to make sure that I answer all of the questions. So please, if you've got a burning question about anything, I'm happy to answer them. Oh, January Rich, she says, can I leave the crock pot on for over eight hours? Yes, but I would highly recommend purchasing a programmable crock pot. So the one that we had talked about was the Hamilton Beach um, Stay and Go. Uh, and then we also talked about the Ninja cooking system. Both of them I use extensively and have really good timers in them. So if you're out of the house for eight hours and your recipe calls for six or seven hours, set it for the six hours, it'll flip over to a warm setting. It's no longer cooking. And then even if you're held up at work, it's fine. Your food is fine. The warm setting will last. And for the Ninja, it lasts an additional 20 hours. So it's it's fine. It's, it's, um, that way you don't have to do it. Um, I have people ask how safe it is to leave it on. Um, while I was doing my crock potting challenge, um, some firefighters in LA put out, um, I, and I only know about this because the LA Times interviewed me and then in it, they must have interviewed some firefighters. And the firefighters had said that it's just as safe as leaving a desk lamp on all day. So that said, you're not going to leave your desk lamp on if there's papers and kitchen towels and bills spread out all over your countertop. So my suggestion would be is to clear off your countertop, put the pot in the middle, make sure the cord isn't frayed. You didn't pick it up at a garage sale for three dollars and have never used it. You know that it's it's a safe model. And if you're not comfortable leaving it unattended all day for the first time, use it over the weekend. Play around and, and figure out what you feel comfortable with. I'm never going to tell you to do something that you don't feel comfortable with. BJ, do you get better results cooking four hours on high or eight hours on low? I personally would prefer to always opt for the low setting and cook it longer. Um, it really doesn't make a difference. Um, I've used my own recipes in a pinch and I put them on at one or two o'clock in the afternoon because I didn't get my act together. So I had to cook them on high and they were fine. I don't think you would notice any sort of taste difference in any way. Um, Nancy, do I cover the hole in the ninja lid? So where is the ninja lid? Okay. 
the, the ninja lid hole is rather large. So yes, I have put painter's tape over it before. Not always. Um, I think it depends on how juicy the food is. If I'm cooking a soup and there's an awful lot of moisture in there, I'm not super worried about moisture leaving the pot because there's so much in there. Um, but if you are making something more delicate or roasting a chicken, then yeah, go ahead and, and put a little bit of painter's tape over it. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, browning the the meat and your onions and your and your caramels. So I um I've gotten to go on the Rachel Ray show a few times, and one of the things that Rachel says is color equals flavor, and um that is true. That said, I don't always brown my meat, so it turns into a a kind of a judgment call. For you. So if you are entertaining and you have time in the morning to pull out the frying pan or to use the ninja and, and you brown all sides of your meat before pushing the button to let it slow cook all day, go for it. Do it. If you're having um, relatives over for dinner and you want to impress them, absolutely take the time to brown all sides of the meat. But if you're just trying to get your family fed on a busy Wednesday because you've got soccer practice all afternoon, dump it all in, push a button and walk away. No one is going to notice the difference unless they're doing a side-by-side -side taste comparison. Okay. Um, is your Barbara, is your five ingredient cookbook gluten-free specific? So let's see, I have it right here. There is no marketing on the cover that says, it's gluten free. That said, it's gluten free because I wrote it. <laughs> so um, everything is gluten free. So for instance, here's a recipe for garlic lemon chicken. One of my notes says three tablespoons soy sauce. I put in parentheses, I use gluten free. So, and so that's how the publisher went about marketing a slow cooker cookbook to the masses, but then also appeasing my gluten-free side. So I, I hope that makes sense. So, so for instance, soy sauce. Um, I use Le Choy soy sauce. I'll also use, um, if they're on sale, a Kikumon gluten-free soy sauce that's perfectly labeled. But um, in general, I think actually, Yeah, none none of the cookbooks specifically say gluten free on the cover. They just happen. They just happen to be. They just happen to be. And I do write about it in the introduction, but for marketing purposes, the publisher did not label them as such. Okay, someone asked, "Do I use the slow cooker bags?" I do. Not often. Um, because I'm Scottish and I don't like to pay for things and they're about a dollar a bag. But if I'm entertaining um, or if I'm making something super goopy, um, for instance, I was the snack mom at the gymnastics um, meets snack bar and we had to make nacho cheese. Nacho cheese is disgusting to clean out of a crock pot after it's simmered on low for 12 hours at the end of the a very long gymnastics meet. So I absolutely use the slow cooker bag so I can pick it up, tie it up and, and throw it away. So so yes, um, I have no issues whatsoever using the slow cooker bag. I have no issues in anything that makes your life easier. I am all for it, all for it. Amy, are there vegetarian recipes in your cookbooks? Yes, every book has a chapter on um, vegetarian recipes along with the website has um, all of the vegetarian recipes classified. Um, my meal plans, there's 14 different meal plans and there is one um, that, it, there's a vegetarian one and there, there's a vegan one as well. So um, absolutely, along with my absolute favorite vegetarian recipe is that sweet potato chili. And I had typed that up in the, um, the PDFs below um, that's labeled taco soup along with kids coloring. There is the recipe for um, sweet potato chili in there. 
along with a really cool graphic of a sweet potato you could color if you wanted. Um, okay. All right. I think we are getting close to wrapping it up. I'm so happy that you were here. Um, this is a really cool thing. I haven't spoken virtually this way in front of so many people. And um, I would love to have you join me on my mailing list. So if you put your name below in that email slot, um, the uh, Nourished Festival producers will send me your email addresses and then I can email you recipes. And I'm happy to, um, to be of help. Okay, Michelle says she went to the mountains and they made a batch of hot chocolate or croissant. Absolutely, absolutely. I am currently working in an elementary school and um, there's no kids right now due to the coronavirus, but on a normal day when there's pajama, pajama day, we make um, batches of hot chocolate um, and the kids can have their pajamas on and sip on hot chocolate and it's just sweet and it's comforting. And then when you wrote in Adirondack Mountains, where my brain went was camping and I actually do take the slow cooker camping and I actually travel with it. So again, because of the gluten free in this, when we travel, it's not necessary. It's not the easiest to go to a, any restaurant anywhere and, and find food that we're all going to eat and like. And so if we're out sightseeing, I will leave the crock pot plugged in and the Airbnb or the condo and then come home, come home to a fully cooked meal. Um, we did a 15 day camping trip in um, like a little pop up tent trailer. And so we once we set up camp, I plugged the slow cooker in and then we left and we did our hiking and our, and our beach visits. And we went to Mount Rushmore and we got to do all the fun things. And then we came back home to our campsite to chili and baked potatoes and, and things like that. And so it's a really easy and economical and um, practical way to feed our family. Because again, even though I've got great kids, at the end of a long day of sightseeing, they don't necessarily have restaurant manners. And so it's just a really great way to feed everybody and make them happy, especially if we're doing it at a hotel or a condo and they get to eat on the bed and watch TV. They're, they're super happy. Super happy. Okay. All right. I am right at one o'clock. And I think you guys are awesome and wonderful. And thank you for being here. Um, all the information is below. And I hope you have a great day and go get to go learn a whole bunch of new things and pick up coupons.